Hey, you two family, we're taking a moment to address the March on DC that was a stand for Israel and also to talk about prophetically what is going on in our nation and our world as all eyes are on Israel and the Hamas war and what is going on. I'm here with Jay and Amy and Amy, we know that you were down in DC yesterday. Can you talk to us about your experience, what you saw and what God is like really dropped in your heart? Yeah, we were there for, you know, almost two full days, just right in the middle uh, at, at events at the Museum of the Bible, hearing stories of Hamas, hearing what God is doing in Israel, hearing about the IDF. It was the bloodiest day, guys, the bloodiest day in Israel's history. I think this is interesting that it was the equivalent of nearly 15 of our 9-11 events, according wow. to the size and the amount of people that they lost. So if you can imagine the impact that that has made, it has been the, the bloodiest time since the Holocaust in um, Israel's history. And there are right now still 240 men and women, the youngest being a three-year-old American girl that is being held hostage by Hamas. And it really hit home, guys, when we were standing, because we were right in the middle. You, you could not move. There was so much support for Israel in Washington, D.C. And they start holding up signs, right, of, of, of men and women that have been kidnapped. And it hit home for me because I look at Sharon, who is 52 years old. She's close to my age. Or Alon, who is close to my daughter's age, a 22-year-old young man. Or Nick, who is 19. That is my middle son's exact age. Or what about this young girl, 12 years old. years old, being held by Hamas. This is the time for Christians to, to you've got to know that God, the God that we serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of Israel. The God that made a covenant with the very dirt and ground of Israel. The God that made the covenant with Abraham that said, I will make your name great. You will have so many children. And Jay, we're in Washington, D.C. And the, the Jews that were there, oh man, my wow. heart just melt. I mean, they, some, you know, in their acidic Jews, some of them casual. I mean, Buck, he had so much fun just talking with all of the Jews. And every single one of them, everywhere we went, because, you know, our shirts say, as Christians, we're standing with Israel. They said, thank you, like tears, thank you. Because they feel right now, Jay, like one of the most hated people groups on the planet. And according to history, they have a right to believe that. Wow, you know, it's really outstanding when you think about it. And this is the reality, ladies and gentlemen. In the end times, during the seven years of tribulation, it is all going to be a battle over Jerusalem. Jesus, the Antichrist, they are not battling for DC. They're not battling for Moscow, Shanghai, or any other place. They are going for Jerusalem. The battles that are happening over there are setting the stage for the end times, which is why I believe also in the midst of all of this, God is getting ready to bring a revival. Every time, ladies and gentlemen, whenever Israel has been attacked as a nation or something big has happened in Israel, there has always been something global spiritually that has been brought into the earth. In 1948, we take a look at the healing revival of Jack Cole, A.A. A. Allen, Gordon Lindsay, and those like that. In 1967, the Six-Day War, the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, took place in Duquesne University, Michigan, Michigan State, and Notre Dame. In 1973, during the Yom Kippur War, 50 years and one day earlier than the war we're in right now, we take a look at the breakout of Christian television and 50 years, once again, and one day later, we are in the middle of the Hamas war now. I believe we are on the verge of seeing something supernatural hit the earth in a great way, which is why we don't need to fear. We don't need to walk in fear. None of this took God by surprise. We need to be compassionate and praying for Israel, but we need to know the prophetic time clock that God is up to something. And also the battle over that land is something is going to happen. I have wondered because it's 50 years. That is the number of Jubilee. Are we going to see that Gaza Strip returned back to Israel in this time? Oh, there's just so much that is happening. There's so much is going on. And you know, one thing, just even the biggest thing that I just really feel in my spirit that God is calling us to do, church, it's time to 
pray. Yes. It's time to be on your face. It is time to let out a groan. It is time to go to another place. I know like Joshua Giles that he recently shared on his prophetic forecast that it's on Mondays on, you can check it out on YouTube, but he was just saying there's this urgent call to prayer because I don't think we understand what happens in prayer. And it's not just That's like, right. oh, Father God, I mean, I'm talking about intercession. If you have your prayer language, getting on your face before the Lord, God is trying to take us to a whole other level of what is going on. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but of powers and principalities and rulers of darkness. And we have to understand in this season, in this time, what we're dealing with is what's happening in the natural. There's a bigger war breaking out in the spiritual and we need to be on our faces. We are called to be like the sons of Issachar and to know the signs of the times. We are called to understand what God is doing in the earth. And we need to cry out for Israel. We need to cry out for the people. We need to cry out for the Palestinian people that are right now that are being trapped in certain ways because of Hamas and everything that is going on. We need to just know that we're like, God, I, this is the one thing I've been praying and I know it is true that he is Adonai Sabaoth. He is the Lord of the angel armies. And we know that God's eye right now is over Israel. We know that God is in the midst of it and it's setting up for things that are to come. And you know, even as we're talking about Israel and what's going on into something that's very personal for me is just even in this season that even my name being Sydney Goldman, marrying into a Jewish family and just even thinking about having these thoughts. Like I'll, I'll just share this personally with you guys is that one night I like there was this banging outside of my door and I not like I heard and I woke up and I'm like, what is going on? And I really thought I was like, I had the first thought I was like, is someone coming to like kill me because of who I am and because of my name? That's the reality that it's like, I know I may not be like Jewish in a different, in different way, but because of my name, it's a very real thing. I think of our brothers and sisters that are in Squirrel Hill in the Jewish community that are living sometimes in fear and they're afraid. And we heard about reports that there was a business here in Pittsburgh that was some, there was a woman that came on the door and just started, you know, smashing the door. There was a swastika painted. These are the very real times that we're in. There's a spirit of hate that is permeating through the earth and it should bring us to our knees and break us at the root of our core. We are not okay with hate. We are not okay with division. We are called to be love. We are called to be the peacemakers as Christians in this season, Amy, mm -hmm. to pray and to stand and to believe. And we are gonna pray, but I think we ought to bring up real quick also because of the narrative that is out there at the universities that if you are pro-Israel, that you are anti-Palestine. Yeah, that's good. Are you kidding me? Right, right. We're pro-Israel because God is for Israel. We love the Palestinian people. We aren't against people, we're against evil. And That's there right. is evil trying to take mm -hmm. over and to occupy Great the point. land of Israel. And you don't mess with the land of Israel. So we pray for the Palestinian people yes. as well as we pray for Israel. And we pray that evil is wiped out. There is a scripture that hit home yesterday at March for Life. I love the story of Esther. I mean, I, she's my dream girl in the Bible. But when they read this yesterday, in the current situation that we're in, in the world, it hit home in a different way. Mordecai, I said, do not think that because you are in the king's house, that you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, that you and your father's family will perish. And who knows? but that you've been called for such a time as this. So I think as the church, like, when's my time? When's my, now's your time. Amen. It's time to stand up for what God stands for. It's time to pray. It's time to see a move of God. And so I think, you know, we should pray right now Amen. for Israel. Yes. Jay. Amen. Well, let's take a minute. I'm going to use these as an opportunity just to intercede and mm -hmm. to pray for those that are still in captivity. And even mm -hmm. in this year, Father God, of Jubilee, Father, Father which we have been declaring, God. Father, we just yes. pray that the freedom to these captives would come forth in the name of Jesus. We just pray right now, Father God, for the protection over these individuals, Father, that no more rapings, no more killings, no more barbarism. Father, we just pray right now for complete and total freedom. We plead the blood of Jesus round about them. Father, we pray protection over Israel and even those that are innocent in Palestine. But Lord, we pray that you would remove Hamas in the name yes, of Jesus. Lord. Annihilate them off of the mm -hmm. earth, Father God. Lord, we want the evil to be removed 
moved, but we want the righteous to stand. And Father God, we just pray your blessing upon all things, Father, over the colleges, Father, in this city, in this city, in Pittsburgh, in the nation, Father God. We pray against the spirit of hate and division. But Lord, we pray in the midst of all of this that you would bring in a, a revival, that you would arise and shine upon your church for our light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. And we thank you, Father God, for returning back to Israel all that was stolen. And we pray for healing for those that have been affected by all of these atrocities as well. And Father, we pray that the church might stand strong and stand up. And we pray protection round about all of our Jewish and brothers and sisters everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And I just want to end with this because I just, when you were praying, Jay, like this really hit my spirit is that even on TikTok, I've been seeing, and many of you probably watching it, it's called the Heravati. There's a song, it's called The Hope that the Israeli soldiers, the IDF have been singing before they go out to battle. And if you're watching right now, maybe you are in Israel, maybe you're in Syria, maybe you're in the Middle East and you're watching and you're fearful, the greatest hope we just wanna take a moment is to point you to Jesus. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life and he paid the ultimate price for you. The ultimate price for you. And if you're questioning and you're wondering where is God in all of this, he is Emmanuel, God with us. And he, I can just even see right now, Jesus is walking the streets of Israel and he's walking in the streets of Gaza and he is weeping and he is crying and he sees your pain. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you and paid the ultimate price. And after three days he was resurrected and because he died and rose again is the reason why we have hope. And so if you're watching and you've been crying out to a God and you're like, I can't even, God's not hearing my prayers. There's only one God and that God's name is Jesus. It's Yeshua, it's the Messiah. And so we just wanna say thank you for watching this. Thank you for praying with us. And we just also want to let you know that you can give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483. And I also want to share this as well as at Cornerstone Television Network, we are committed. We have like we have a tithe committee that every all the proceeds that we have received, we give 10 percent. And we've given to many ministries that are in Israel, even a ministry like that are connected to Pittsburgh. So just we want to just let you know that if you want to help support in any way that that's what we're here to do at Cornerstone. We stand with Israel. We stand with you and we love you. Have a great day.